Welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do a more of a practical program utilizing a lot of the things that we've learned in the past tutorials. I mean this isn't going to be a groundbreaking program but it's something that your kids might be interested in or you can find different ways to utilize these concepts in other um, programs. So as you can tell from the lines two and three I've included libraries that we haven't used before. The first one is the C standard library, and the second one is the C time. And I'll show you why we need those in just a moment. We're going to generate random numbers, and we're going to guess to see if the numbers are correct or not. This is all on the fly. I haven't mapped this out, so um, bear with me on this one. But I wanted to show you kind of the, the, pro the process of how I think about writing a program. So first, what I want to do is I, I want to generate a random number. There's something that you just have to do to generate a random number, and that's called using srand, and that is part of your C standard library. And just understand the syntax. I'm going to do, I'm going to write it out, and then I'll explain it here. Okay. So the srand is a function that takes one parameter, and that parameter is all of this right there. So it's a function that we didn't create, though. We've been creating our own functions. This srand is part of the C standard library. In fact, I believe I have to do std colon colon. Sorry, I don't use it very often. So anyways, it takes in one parameter. Now what this parameter is doing is it's calling another function called time within that parameter. And the time function comes from, you'd, get, you'd guess it, C time. So the time gives you the actual amount of seconds passed since January 1st, 1970. So it's always going to be something different. And I'll tell you why that's important in just a moment. We'll do a quick uh, test. And when it returns a value for time, I'm not 100% sure on the format of that value. But srand, the parameter that it takes in, is an integer value. And um, as you can see, it says unsigned integer. So it's an integer value. And what this parenthesis does in front of time is it type casts whatever format time was in into an integer value. More on that as you go, but the, that's the concept. Now to generate the random number, let's do integer random number equals, and let's just set it to um, using the rand function. I don't know if it's std rand or not. It's been a while. So uh, random number, but then we're going to use the modulus operator 100. So we want something between... 0 and 99, that's what you would use, but we I want between 0 and 100, so I'm going to add 1, and I will put parentheses just in case, just to make it a little bit more clear what I'm doing here. Before I get going, I'm going to actually hit F12 and rebuild and build it and compile it. No errors, so the STD colon colon was, was fine. I just wasn't sure if that was part of the standard or not. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to generate a random number and store it under random number. To prove that, let's go ahead and print it out real quick to the screen. So I see out to the screen, and let's just put in um, the random number for now. Hit F12 to rebuild it. Now it's key to rebuild it, otherwise it's just going to compile uh, what you compiled last time, or, or run what you compiled last time. Hit F5, we get a random number, 93. Okay, that's between 0 and 100, yes. Run it again, you get number 2. Run it again, you get number 12 and so on, right? Now, just to show you why this line 8 is important, let's comment that out and, re and rebuild it. So F12, F5, you get 42, you get 42. Oop. Run it again, you get 42. So it's a random number, it's random completely, but it's always the same random number. You see the difference? So if I just set the S rand function to a specific time, it will randomize your results a lot better. Now, a purist or someone that's really into this, you know, mathematics of randomized numbers will definitely tell you this isn't truly random, but for our sakes, it's perfectly fine and good enough. Okay, so now let's, let me rebuild that and show you that it's going to go back to random numbers. So F12, F5, you get 95. Two and so on. So it does work. Okay, I'm not interested in printing out this random number right now. What I'm interested in doing is having a little test to see if you can guess the random number. So let's let's print that out and just type in C out 
guess the random number, right? Colon. And I'll just end line there. And now let's just do a CN, you know, my choice, which we didn't create that value yet, so you're going to get an error. So now that I know that I want to have a, a choice stored, I can usually put it on the top. You can do a uh, integer my choice, and you can set it equal to some sort of flag value, like negative one, something like that. Um, and while we're at it, let's create a bool that says um, bool is correct equals false. Boolean is either false or true. And I'm just trying to use all these concepts that we used before to make this happen. Guess the random number between 0 and 100. Okay, you put in your choice. Now that the choice is done, now you get to check to see did I actually get it right? So maybe we'll do that check by doing a uh, function. So how about we do a function called check and bring in the random number and bring in my choice. Let's see if they're even or not. Right? Simple enough. Now we didn't create this yet, so let's let's go ahead and create this function. I'm going to copy it. I go to the top. I declare the function. Now these are. I'm, I want to return a bool. True or false? Are these the same? Now what are these? These are integer values. Integer random number. Integer my choice. Now don't forget this my choice is a copy of the my choice here. It's a completely different variable. You can name them different or you can name them the same. It doesn't matter. I guess I'll leave them the same and we'll define that function down here. I know I'm going fast because I want to keep these videos short, but hopefully you can watch this a couple times and get, to, get the idea. So in other words, here we go. We just say if random number equals 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 not any, not a assignment operator, but an equality operator. If random number equals my choice, return true. Else, basically, return false. Now remember, the very first line under an if statement is part of that if statement, but nothing else is. So, no, so if this if statement is not true, it's going to return false. If it's true, it'll return true. In fact, it's probably best programming practice to actually create a whole nother bool here. Bool status equals false. And let's just go ahead and do that. Let's say status equals true instead and return status. It's probably just a good programming practice. Your compiler is going to um, optimize this anyways. But if you have a status, it'll, pre it'll prevent your code from returning early. I, don't, I like to have all my code return at the very end. If I had a return statement here, what if there was some code underneath it that I kind of did, I did want to use? Or if this was, you know, 40 pages long, how do I really know I want to return without going through all of that function? And it's just good pro programming practice to have a some sort of status indicator and return that. So here we go. We have check random number my choice, but that doesn't really do anything, so we have to do an if statement. If check random number my choice is equal, equal to true or I'll show you another trick here I'm just gonna say you guessed correctly and in quotes of course you guess correctly the random number is and let's Go ahead and print it out so we know that we're right. Uh, random number. And then let's go ahead and do a else. And just say incorrect guess. Try again. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do this, but this is only gonna do it once. And I'm just thinking about it. Let's go ahead and just make this a 10 instead of a 100. 
so that we can actually get a correct answer once in a while. So change these to tens, and we'll, we might be able to get a good answer here. Um, let's put this into a big giant loop of some sort. So guess the random number. We want all of this to be in a loop. So while or a do while would be a good one because the do while executes exactly one time. Remember. So what I can do is I can highlight all of this code, and then I can hit the tab key, and the whole thing tabs over. So that's just one little shortcut. So do while, and then there's no flag. So while I'm gonna do while my choice. Oops, I'm sorry. Do while my choice does not equal that. Now this is a very redundant. We're 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 doing this not the most correct way. While my choice is not equal um, random number, so we're checking the same thing multiple times in this. And I don't believe there's a semicolon on a do while. Yes, there is. Okay, let's try this out and see what happens. F12. I've got an error. Let's let's find it. Um, and it, and I, I usually look at the the bold one first. In function int main int character. So there's something wrong here, right? So if check random number, I've got a added parenthesis, it looks like. There we go. So let's try that again. And what I do is when I fix one error, I just go ahead and recompile the whole thing. Because usually one error causes like 15 compilation errors. So fix the one, recompile, it's just quicker. Now if you're dealing with very large systems, the compile is going to take forever, so you might not want to do that. So it compiled correctly, it should be a random number between 0 and 10, and it should repeat until my choice equals random number. Let's see if that's true. I'm going to hit F5 and try it out. Guess the random number between 0 and 10. I'm going to guess 5. Incorrect guess. Try again. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 6. You guessed correctly the random number is 6. So that worked. And of course you'd want to try this out with various um, inputs and see if you did something wrong. Now this code is a little bit sloppy looking, I'm not going to lie. Um, first of all, this this while should be tabbed over. Um, white space is free, don't forget that, so you can definitely use white space. Now we utilized bool is correct equals false, but we didn't really... Uh, did we even use that? We didn't, so that... We didn't even use incorrect, so we can delete that out of there. You see what I'm saying though? This was with, without being planned. We used a function, we used the bool, and we also utilized functions that we didn't create, like the rand function, and the time function, and the srand function, all from the C time library and the C standard library. I hope that you can use this and create your own little thing, um, make it a little bit better, maybe put some of this in its own functions. Um, you can do a lot of things with this, but I wanted to give you something that you can grasp and play with for now. So I hope this helps. If not, uh, hopefully the next video will treat you good.